I'm Richard Weinberg, and I'm the youngest son of Alvin Weinberg. He was uh, one of the early players in uh, concern for carbon dioxide and global warming. The carbon dioxide greenhouse effect is caused by the absorption of the carbon dioxide molecule. That is what I had worked on 50 years ago. I didn't realize how obscure it was at the time, but it was well known that there was this so-called greenhouse effect and coal was going to generate CO2. Um, which now is, is a big deal in the world. Uh, well, I kept hearing about it when, when I was 16. Emissions of carbon is threatening the future of our planet and our civilization. We need to find solutions that are going to allow us to meet the energy demands of the growing world population, but do so in a way that doesn't irreparably harm the environment. My name's Hugh McDermott, and I'm the chairman of the Board of Terrestrial Energy. We know that the MSR works in a lab. This was demonstrated very clearly at Oak Ridge National Laboratory for a number of years but it must work in the environment of private industry where regulations, costs, and commercial considerations drive decisions. Hands up terrestrial teams. Let everybody raise your hands so that people will know who to chat with, including David LeBlanc, who is truly the architect and visionary for our technology. Uh, as physicists by training, and that often draws one to fusion. I kind of discovered that, hey, this fission stuff, uh, when you really look into it, it's, uh, it's just as good and it's, and it's doable. And all roads kept leading back to these molten salt reactors. There's many jurisdictions in the world that uh, would be perhaps more favorable than the U.S. NRC. So Canada isn't completely locked up with the United States NRC? No, not, not in any way. We intend to design and license our technology right here in Canada. We intend to build the first demonstration unit in Canada. The NRC is rule-based, so they've made the rules around light water reactors, so anything that's not that has to find a way to fit into those rules or slowly get them to change the rules. Uh, whereas the Canadian regulator is much more performance-based. The IMSR design offers a walk-away safe level of assurance. Zero operator intervention, even with a total loss of site power. If someone is anti-nuclear, if they're at least rational about it, you ask them what's their problem with it, and the molten salt reactor approach really, really solves a lot of those issues. The IMSR has a much smaller and relatively short-lived waste footprint. It burns its nuclear fuel far more completely and generates power with higher thermodynamic efficiency than solid fuel reactors. Together, this leads to creation of only one-sixth of the long-lived transuranic fuel waste, essentially plutonium, per kilowatt hour compared to the nuclear plants we have today. Our goal in, in our design is making them as simple as possible, reducing the needed R&D and the needed capital. That's the, that's the main problem with advanced nuclear power is advanced often means more complicated. Graphite has a limited life in a reactor core, as I'm sure many in the audience know. We're very happy with the high nickel alloys, even some stainless steels, uh, but proving a 30, 60 year timeline will be a challenge to the regulator, investors, etc. The question is, can the capital value of a sealed and replaceable vessel be recovered over its limited life at current energy prices? From our estimates, the answer is yes. It is handsomely recovered over the seven-year operational life that we estimate for the IMSR core unit. Overnight capital costs comparable to a fossil fuel power plant, operating costs that are a fraction of conventional nuclear. The IMSR will demonstrate the lowest lifetime cost of energy of any known technology, and by some margin. Uranium consumption per kilowatt hour will be one-sixth of conventional nuclear. The one word that I've said many times to other people changed my whole life, literally. And that one word was thorium. 
I'm Paul. I'm Vice President of Business Development for Eastern Canada for Terrestrial Energy. I'd never heard of thorium before, so I went home and did what everybody does. I googled thorium. It wasn't very long before I was watching YouTube videos of David LeBlanc talking about molten salt reactors. Thorium is a pretty remarkable fuel source, and we may or may not use it in our, our, our designs, uh, but it's really about the reactor itself and they can be greatly simplified by going to the use of low inert uranium. I guess the expression in Canada or around the world is shovel ready. You can't get the, the, the hour, the week, the month it takes to explain someone why a reactor is so much better than what we have before. Thorium is, is sort of the, the sales pitch in a sense, but come for the thorium and stay for the reactor because it really is the reactor that these people that know more about it and are trying to get your attention. The liquid fuel gives it the many advantages that uh, many of us in the field love to, to brag about, to talk about, uh, the safety advantages, the reduced cost advantages, the long lived waste um, reduction advantages. Um, they were developed to be breeders, to use thorium in a breeding mode. There is enough uranium in the world to last literally thousands of years, uh, maybe not millions of years compared to, to breeder designs, uh, but there is enough to go around. Going down this road here, what you want to do is borrow every conceivable synergy from existing supply chains and regulation as well. You want to stick to existing script. There are areas where you simply can't, you know, you can't overlap because you are in fact using entirely different technology. But the first thing is fuel. You know, you use a, you start off with low enriched uranium. I mean, then you have a supply chain that, that, that currently exists globally. So the, the commercial task is to overlap as much as you can with um, what's going on currently. We want to shift the narrative to an aspirational level. We believe that nuclear energy can realize its potential for safe, sustainable, reliable, and emission-free energy. Public policy has been moving and will continue to move in only one direction, rewarding carbon-free alternatives and making it tougher for the others. We believe terrestrial energy is well-placed to benefit from this changing world and to contribute in a positive way to a brighter energy future.